So this is lesson five in the Android learning path. And this lesson is all about control flow. And what I mean by control flow is, is how do we as developers know what order our code, the code that we're writing or the code that's included in our project, how do we know what order it gets executed in? And so it's not as hard as it may seem, um, but Android definitely has a method and a process for executing this code. And the method that Android uses is really no different than the method um, that any other operating system will use. And that is, is that it starts um, at some kind of a beginning point or some kind of a launching point. And then it executes a method. And then in that method, the control flow may jump to another method, execute, and then jump back. So in order to try to understand this a little bit better, let's get rid of some of the, some of the code that we wrote before. I'm just going to go all the way down to the end here, and I'm just going to make a a section where it's commented out so we can come back and grab that here in a minute. But um, a, a pretty empty Android activity um, class file without any custom methods or anything like that will typically look something like this. And so let's ignore let's ignore all of this stuff down here. It's yelling at me because I've got a extra comment. Okay. So a typical Android activity um, will look something like this. You'll see all of the built-in methods on create, on start, on restart, on resume, on stop, and then on destroy, kind of listed in order usually. And then below that, you'll, you'll begin to see some other custom methods. So custom methods in this class file. So like we talked about earlier, um, the Android activity is going to start in the onCreate method. And it's in this onCreate method where the content view is set. Remember, this is the part of the code where it chooses which um, layout.xml file to use. This is also the part of the code where you want to do all your layout, um, layout work here. And the reason for that is, is generally speaking, you want to get all of the things laid out on the screen in the onCreate method um, so they only get created one time. You don't want to do layout in these other methods that Android fires um, sometimes when you're not expecting it. So on the onCreate, which is only fired once when the activity is created, you want to do your layout. And let's say um, that we have our button there. Let's go grab our button code again, and we'll talk about what's going to happen when we add this button here. So Android, the way that it executes code is line by line by line it's going to execute the code until it comes to another method call and so when it comes to another method call it's going to use this concept called jump to new method so let's say that in our code we lay out our button and our button doesn't do, you know does something on click does something on click usually triggering a method then after we lay out our button, um, we add a, add a uh, music player to the screen. And then let's say we add a download music button. So we do our layout, and then the activity displays. And the, the user is presented with a screen that says, you know, click the button to download the song. Well, we wouldn't want to put the download song code and the and all the other long running tasks code in the onCreate method because that would take too long. And the idea is, it's, um, in mobile development, is you want to show the user the screen as quickly as you can. So you don't want to put very, um, very much code in the onCreate method that, um, unless you absolutely have to, like our setup code. So usually we would um, get the screen set up and then we would wait for some user interaction. For example, the button click to download the music. So let's say we have a, uh, um, a method called download music that is triggered on this button click. So we would need to write the download music um, method. No, I'm just going to get rid of all this. We don't need it. I'm going to write the download music method and um, sticking with tradition we would want to run it after all the built-in methods are there. So we'll call this um, download music and let's say that this is a long running um, code section it's got to go out to the internet and connect and then it's got to come back after it's all done so when the user presses this button 
it's going to trigger this event. So let's jump down here and let's say that this download music event is triggered. Well, you probably wouldn't want to do nothing when the music was downloaded because then the user wouldn't really understand what was going on. You would probably want to do something like show progress, then actually download the music or download song, and then hide progress. So these methods um, are methods that we would have to implement. So let's um, do the do the show progress method and we would probably do something like show um, spinning wheel or something like that and then we would write a method called download song and this is the method that takes a really long time um, get music get song from URL and then we would have a method called hide progress and this would hide the progress uh, wheel, spinning wheel, or whatever. This is just a, an arbitrary idea. So the point is, is, as the code is executed here, line by line by line, the first thing that's going to happen when the music download music method is called, when the person clicks the button up here, they click the button, download music. So that fires this method, which in turn fires this method, the show progress method uh, runs, 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 and then it returns, it returns the control back to here. And then the download song method runs. And this is a long running task. Probably takes a you know 30 seconds or something. And then when it's done, it returns to here. And then our hide progress is the method that you know hides the wheel and it just takes a second or the progress indicator and it takes a second. And then we end up here. So the idea of control flow, that's just a term that we use um, to describe how the Android operating system is interpreting our code. And the key to successful mobile development is you want to keep the user engaged. You don't want things to be um, stuck on the screen or just waiting on the screen with nothing happening. So the idea is to break up your logic into, uh, and break up your program logic into um, efficient little methods, as efficient as you can get that you can call or trigger from different parts of your application. So in this example, we just triggered methods inside this one class. Um, in more complicated examples, of course, you'll be triggering methods in different classes, and that happens a lot in the BuzzTouch um, source code that you download from your control panel. So to summarize um, what we mean by control flow, what we mean is control flow allows a developer to instruct Android um, what or, and control flow allows the developer to um, tell Android what order their code should be executed in. So the, the developer gets to decide the order of the, the, the process or the flow, but he needs to tell Android how that control flow works, and we do it by jumping from method to method to method.